My name is Howard Wimshurst, and I spend a lot of time creating hand-drawn animation. As a professional animator, it's important to learn from the best animations in the world. I'm taking you with me on these research sessions so you can see how I learn. You are watching Sakuga Studies. So this is the third and final one and this blew me away. Take a look. Yeah, <laughs> I think that has to be one of the most magnificent pieces of animation I've ever seen. Wow. All right, let's break down this shot. I think I'm gonna find some crazy stuff in here. First of all, before we get further into the video, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of this video, Zyro. One of the core foundations of my business as an animator online is my website. And I think that even if you're a hobbyist animator, setting up a place on the internet dedicated to showcasing your work is a really worthwhile investment. And with Zyro's easy drag and drop website builder, I'm convinced that anyone can do this. Even if you get stuck, they have 24 seven support chats there set up for you to ask them any questions that you might have. Just dedicate a weekend to this and you'll have your very own place. Free from the distractions of social media and other people's artwork, it's gonna be your place on the internet for your artwork. After doing some research on Zyro, I've found their pricing to be probably the best value I can find. And right now you can take advantage of Zyro's Black Friday deal. For this limited window of time, you can get up to 86% off plus three months free with any yearly plan. Now this means you can set up a professional looking website starting from just $1.71 per month. Just use my special code, Howard, or click the link in the description. That's H-O-W-A-R-D, or click the link at the top of the description. Now let's get back to the main video. I'll play it through first and then we'll have a closer look at this frame by frame. My gosh, that is magnificent. Okay, so we start and every shot has a really smooth transition from one shot to another. They often have like either fire or these this drapery that's translucent. So every transition is masked really nicely in a way where everything just flows into each other. And this is one of my favorites because we've got this kind of lattice of these translucent curtains that pull back. As they pull back, the first thing we see is this character's face. She's the villainess and we see her and she's at this angle and immediately we can see this amazing character design. Look at this cloak with this amazing pattern here with this deep red and black. 
very evil, very cool as well. Look at the hair. One of my favorite things about this is the hair, the stylization of this hair, taking these extraordinary angles like I've never seen before, really. I, I don't think I've ever seen it animated in this way, in this style. So she tilts the head in this kind of evil way and look at the shimmering outline on the whole thing. Now, this is an interesting thing. This outline, this is a silhouette outline. Now you can see that when the line, when it goes inside the silhouette here, it reduces in thickness. So this thick sparkling golden outline is reserved only for the outside. And this can be done with a digital effect quite easily. And it's very effective here. It just means that wherever she is, she pops out of the background and it just adds this quality to the whole animation textured. They are really uh, special eyes, I, I guess is the only way I could describe them with these little curling patterns. The curtains frame this and they also add depth. We've got this depth of field blur on them and this just means that there are now three layers of depth instead of two and it's good to keep that around at times until they pass out of view like this and she looks directly at us and for a moment we can see the full pupils here and when that happens it's like it's quite engaging to see the full rim of their iris once again the hair i'm such a big admirer of the hair in these shots it's something to do with the curves these straight curves from drawing experience in drawing i can tell you these straight curves are difficult to do and they're even more difficult to do when the spacing of these shots are close together and they are close together in a lot of these it takes a lot of confidence it takes a draftsman with a lot of experience to be able to consistently draw these straight curves one frame to another in this way so i can tell a lot of care and attention has gone into this especially the hair we get really up close to this character here and we can see this slight bulging of the facial profile can you see that slight bulging? The forehead is quite large in proportion to the chin and this is essentially imitating a wide angle lens effect. Again, very precise draftsmanship on this. You can see that that facial profile changes just from this level of depth to that level of depth. It changes like this. I really like the makeup. This accentuates the bridge of the nose. We can see some really nice texture coming through on this hair. It's kind of like a marble texture. I never would have thought to do that. It's, it's amazing, like a tapestry. We've got different textures for different parts of the body. Slight raise of the eyebrow here to give that uh, sadistic intentions, I suppose. Now, this is where it gets interesting. What's happened with the camera angle is it's very smoothly changed from a, a track in like this. You can see here it's a track in and then here it just very gently starts to pivot around this character. So we're changing from moving in to now moving around. So now we can see that the background is moving counter to where the camera is moving. Intuitively you'll be able to feel this with the shot that it's starting to circle around this character. Now, here's where you can really see the confidence in the keyframe animation. She brings her chin in, and this is like an anticipation move before the main movement in this character animation. Tilted her face down for a few frames, and it's quite exaggerated here. We can't even see her mouth anymore. So I love how far it's pushed. Then the next frame, look at that difference there. That is just popping out at us. and. Then we've got the chin really raised like this so we can see the arch in the neck. I love how far this animator has pushed this and we have these incredible streaks of hair. We can see the perspective on that hair as the thickness of that hair tendril gets thicker as it gets closer to us which creates that depth, the linear perspective. There's just something about this uh, facial profile that's so stylized is pushed so far that this really makes it a work of art in my opinion not just a high quality piece of animation but a work of art someone has really 
has bled for this, you know, they, they've really tried hard in this. With a lot of the tendrils of hair, they haven't just done it for one frame and then kind of fudged it on the rest of the frames. That's something that I would probably do. They're in betweening these hair tendrils because they care. But it doesn't linger on this frame too much. It's enough for us to notice it. But before long, we start getting this amazing textured flames coming out of the side of her mouth. And we've got these lovely spirals worked into it. It's not just any ordinary flames. These feel like magical flames. They're not just flames, they're magical flames. I love these zigzag patterns that are showing on this hair tendril. Super confident, bold, stylized and we get even more accentuated with this. They push it as far as this pose will go. It's distorted so much that it looks abstract. It would be impossible to do with live action footage. This is only something you can achieve with 2D hand-drawn animation, in my opinion, not even 3D. You would just go inside the mesh <laughs> with 3D. So this is a 2D exclusive and We've kept this tendril of hair. Look how straight these curved lines are. They're straight curves. That's why I'm calling them straight curves. They're able to do this with bold and precision. That's a difficult combination to have in your draftsmanship. They're always kind of tangled up in the frame. There isn't this gust of wind that sweeps the hair out of the way so that it's nice and neat. No, it, it's crossing over with all these shapes that we see in the frame. In one frame, she snaps open her mouth. She's about to kind of breathe fire. We get a look into the inferno inside her mouth. And not only is there an inferno inside, there are eyeballs. Now, this is some kind of godlike, mythical, superhuman thing they've got her doing. We're staying with the tangles and look at these shapes working their way across like that. Incredible. These eyeballs poking out. This is starting to get pretty nightmarish. A villain should have bring something a bit scary, a bit nightmarish with them, if you ask me, to be a good bad guy. Staying with the spirals, these spirals will come and go, they will emanate out, they will ripple out. And now we've got loads of eyeballs in the mouth, oh my goodness. So she's kind of vomiting up these eyeballs as well as fire. They've just distorted and stretched these teeth so well. I love how messy this is, how chaotic it is, but there's energy in all of these lines. Look at these lines coming outwards like this. Energy in so much of them, it's like, tearing and tangling there's only so many words i can use for it but i'm trying to my best to describe it with words what i'm seeing <laughs> i'd find it so difficult to come up with this kind of keyframe because what is there really it's not logic that we're looking at it's it's beyond logic it's creativity finding these abstract shapes to depict this evil demoness a witch lady it just keeps going, it's unrelenting with these keyframes. I just love it, but I can still kind of recognize it. I can recognize what it is. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this negative space and these flames everywhere, just emanating, echoing through the whole thing. We don't just have tendrils of hair now, we have tendrils of what looks like blood. I <laughs> Look at this. We've got these um, spirals and circles and circles within circles within circles. Creating this tangled web lattice of flame, blood, hair. Oh, look at that. These layered glows on top. So obviously brought it through and very thorough compositing pass to make sure all these colors, the flames are popping out as they should be because they're flames, they're bright, they're emanating light. There is the light of the flame that is reflecting onto the skin. I love the facial profile and how much it's stretched. That's really what's making this scene special to me. So this has just been pure chaos before and now we can see it's actually shooting out as a kind of uh, a jet. <laughs> We're going to see in the next few frames this hair is going to shoot forward kind of past her, her head like that. Look at this shape here from this kind of uh, blood fire. So strong, so, so strong. Down to every detail these shapes are holding up, repeating themselves as well. So if you can do something once, that's a fluke. If you can do it again and again and again, that's a style. Well, this is a visual style that's being repeated.
Okay, and that's just in one shot. This is what I'm talking about with Chinese animation style, with deep roots in Chinese culture that comes through in the drawing style. Gorgeous, ornate detail in this. Just that hand movement alone, the stylized hand movement of putting the hand underneath this fountain of blood. I mean, the 3D animation, sure, it's fine, it's great. The 2D animation in this is astounding. They say they want to rival DreamWorks with this, and it certainly looks like it could be a rival to DreamWorks. Like, moving forward from this, I'm going to do a deep dive of researching who these animators are that worked behind the scenes on this. I have found one of the most prominent animators is Tang Cheng. Now, he studied animation at the University of Southern California. He was a story artist at DreamWorks. So the tactic with China is that, as well as setting up their own educational infrastructure, they've been calling back animation graduates who rose up to become top artists in the American animation industry, artists at DreamWorks, Blizzard Entertainment, to work on Chinese animation. So I want to show you Tang Chen's amazing student film. And you're going to see some stylistic similarities between his student film and the 2D animation work on Jiang Zia. So from his film, I can see that he's an incredibly skilled artist who loves martial arts and Chinese culture. And so now I'm a big fan of his work and I would invite you if you're interested in this kind of stuff, when you find an animation that you like to, to look into the backstory of how this animation came about, who the artists are behind it, because it's a fascinating rabbit hole to go down. advanced animation, world-class animation, is something that for many years I've been wanting to teach. But to really teach these methods, I would need to sit down with you for many hours. It's not gonna cut it just having a 15 to 20 minutes long YouTube video, which is mainly for entertainment purposes. Like I feel like most people who watch this, they watch it for entertainment and a little bit of education on the side which is fine, it's fine for you to be entertained, but if you're serious about this, if you really want to create desirable animation, if you want to do this for a living, if you're that kind of passionate, driven person, like I am, then you need more than just an entertaining YouTube video every once in a while. You need a structured regimen of education which is focused. If you're interested in what I'm talking about, I have been working on a big project behind the scenes. I call this project Mastering Motion. Now, I don't want to give away too much yet, but if you go onto animatorguild.com now, you're going to see a countdown timer for when this is going to open up for pre-sales. So I just want to put that on your radar. For the animators who want to learn beyond just the basic principles of animation, and if you're one of those animators, I think you're going to want to find out what's in this course. All right, I've already said too much about this, so I'm going to end the video there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like this kind of videos, and um, I'll see you in the next one.